Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zenith Garavar from ZK Research, and I'm here in Japan at Zscaler Zenith Live uh, event, which is part of the APJ series. Uh, this part of the Zcast series is also known around the world with Nathan Howe. Uh, Nathan, uh, Group VP with Zscaler. I think uh, it's in a third continent I've done a video with you in. Yep. We met in uh, Barcelona, Mobile Congress, yep. uh, Vegas, I think, in Zenith Live. Uh, maybe somewhere else. Ah, the Oracle, Oracle, Oracle Arena of the Warriors. Yeah, oh, that's Oracle, that's right. And uh, now here in Japan. So, right. um, uh, Nathan, uh, uh, great to talk to you again. Uh, quick intro uh, on yourself. And actually, we're here at the ZCL or Cellular Standard. For people maybe that aren't familiar with that, talk about what that is. Yeah, happy to. And, and always good to have a conversation yeah. with you. Yeah. So, very briefly, ZCL or Cellular is the next foray into zero trust everywhere, hence the sign behind me. The idea really means that Zscaler has been forwarding and protecting users, workloads, clouds, locations for many years. But devices that were outside the bounds of those ecosystems, things like robots that are moving or vehicles that are out there, <laughs> they needed connectivity into that zero trust policy that customers have. Yeah. And that's what Zscaler Cellular provides, that, in, that path in for there. And so how does that work then? You're actually building your zero trust software right on the SIM itself. Not quite. Okay. We are using SIMs and yeah. SIM identity for that, but we've actually integrated our system into the mobile network. So oh, what right, that means right. okay. is that a SIM, when it goes onto the network, it says, hey, or any mobile carrier for what it's worth, says, hey, I'm a Zscaler SIM, and I'm customer A or customer B, connect me to this, the customer policy. And we've built the policy engine within the mobile network, so we bolt in there. That means this little robot or whatever may, may be out there, when it connects in, it goes directly into the customer's zero trust policy. So the SIM acts like an identity identifier for that to get in. And if you weren't doing that, off that, the, the SIM connected to your, uh, to your network, yeah. uh, okay. how would you do that? Is, it, would it even be feasible? It's kind of feasible, but you'd have to have client-side software. Yeah. And that's the thing we wanted to do is not actually have any client initiation or software installed. You put the SIM in a device or you use a QR code eSIM, yeah. and that gets the device directly on a zero trust policy. So there's no client configuration, there's no client-side software. It's a direct installation. None of that, we put a SIM in and we just go. Now, I think when we talked at Mobile World Congress, you had just signed up a couple of operators, uh, I believe. Uh, we are here in the APJ region, right? Yeah. And so Australia, New Zealand, Japan, like a lot of big countries here. And so talk about some of the partnerships that you have here on the carrier side that are yeah. embracing this. And so, so to be very clear, we partner globally. When you take a SIM from us, it can go and operate on around 530 carriers globally. So that could be NTT here, it could be Deutsche Telekom in Germany, it could be at and in the US. But we want to give our customers that ubiquity of simplicity, they can get it in any networks. But to your point and your question, we work with partners, very specific partners. And so we have partners like NTT, Docomo here in Japan, or their global business uh, with their NTT data partners globally, where we're working with them on, they provide the SIM, we provide the security. Same thing goes with maybe some of our partners in Australia, like Telstra. Yeah. Um, and we're doing the same sort of things globally, where we're finding select partners that help us provide a local interconnect with a good customer base. And that's the main goal is we don't want to be a mobile provider. We want to work with providers. We actually want to serve our customers by making this available so that all the other stuff like this robot yeah. can get onto their zero trust policy without all the complexity of all the other stuff that comes with it. In fact, shout out to Telstra and Z Partner of the Year. Yes, absolutely. Uh, down at the, the Melbourne event. So that was yeah. good to see. Um, and then, so from a, the partnership perspective for the mobile operator, they provide the connectivity, you provide the security. Correct. They can then get into managed services. Exactly. Right. Things like that. And then that becomes a win, win, win. Customer simplicity. Right. Um, Spot on. Yeah, and we look yeah. at it kind of three ways. There's the MSP kind of managed service. There's going to be the, um, the, the value resellers to kind of resell the product itself. But then also we start working with manufacturers like this and it becomes an OEM conversation. They will sell the service, whether that's a service from us directly or whether it's a partner like Telstra or NTT, and we build the security into this product. So this product, whenever it's roaming around in airports or wherever yeah. it may be, it's securely connected by Zscaler. All right, so we're here with uh, Cocobo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so tell me a little bit about Cocobo, what uh, it is, what it does, and how where how are you integrating this? Yeah, so Cocobo is from a company called Secom, and Secom is a Japanese local manufacturer. They build these Century robots, and basically what they do is <laughs> they are a kind of offsetting and helping security guards in buildings around the and in like like airports and other things. And the goal being is that they can be out with a camera, getting a view of the site, the location, providing information directly back into a control room or to an operator to be able to say, "Hey, there's a problem. Someone's jumped a fence, or maybe it's a sporting event. Someone's fallen over and they're injured, and then they can alert someone to send real people to help." So. 
the whole idea of this is to be interactive with humans, but to also keep an eye on, on the scope so you don't have to have people everywhere. And this gives uh, a lot of insights back to the operators. They have LiDAR, they have sensors in the front, they're allowed to detect if someone's fallen down. They have a commu two-way communication flow so that you can be in the comms room or on your CB and say, hey, get out of the way sort of thing. And it all goes over multiple different types of communication network. In this scenario with us, it's going over Zscaler Cellular. I think these even have things like emotion detection, right? So yes. they can tell if somebody's aggressive or not. You exactly. can put in a, 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 you know, preschool. Yeah. There's all kinds of use cases or something like exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah. The idea is not to be uh, aggressive robots. And this, I think we're just discussing with the manufacturer, this is a top speed of six kilometers an hour. Woo. Yeah, <laughs> it's really burning through. Yeah, but yeah. it's meant to be there to collect information. And you're right. And that information is not just about security risks, but it's about emotions and challenges and problems that people have. So. Well, I guess the benefit is if we become self-aware, we can run it. Well, that's true. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how fast you are, but yeah, 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 that's yeah. maybe okay. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least on my bike. Um, yeah, and um, well, so that's really, that's fascinating that, it, that you can power these things now. Yeah. And it, it raises kind of a, a bigger, interesting question here. And I know, to me, a big theme, the theme of the show is the trust gap, right? right? And so this is the classic example of something where there would have been a huge trust gap because when you mentioned you could have had a workaround by loading software. These things really aren't open to load software. It's not like this is run on Windows, no. right? So what am I loading the software onto? It's some, yeah. right? And so this might be the only way to secure that now. Yeah, it, exactly. So it, I think about, um, uh, you know, when I look at this device, I think about uh, the keynotes given by Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, yeah. where he talks about how the next wave of AI, and he's assuming that Agentix here, right, yeah. is physical AI. Right. where we're going to live in a world where we have more connected things, and a lot of those will be autonomous machines. My yep. son's actually working at a company that's building uh, autonomous forklifts. Cool. Yeah, and uh, so just talk about you know that opportunity for Zscanner. When you think about, when you look out ahead and this world of physical AI, be AI becomes real, uh, you know, just from a, how excited are you about that? Oh, I mean, yeah. massively. I think yeah. you go back to the simplicity of what Zscanner is. We don't allow any communication to happen. We are building a trusted communication path session by session between entity A and entity B. And that was a user, that was a yeah. workload, that was a workload, that was a cloud. But now we're talking about other devices and exactly heading where Jensen's outlining, there are now these huge ecosystems of different devices that exist. Not just robots, but yeah. there are sensors on highways. There are vehicles, every vehicle you drive, every car has multiple yeah. SIMs in it. They're all communicating about information, whether it be what video you're watching in the car or what Spotify stream you're listening to, but it's also what's actually happening to the car. That needs to be collected and securely put back into a customer's ecosystem. And that's where, from my point of view, all that need for then intelligence to be able to be generated and understood, we pull that together through the Zero Trust Exchange. We bring that information through Zscaler, send it on to the right application, and we do it securely using Zscaler Cellular yeah. so that this robot knows exactly where to go based upon all the other telemetry information that's been collecting. So yeah, that, in that, the dream that, that Jensen and NVIDIA are talking about is spot on where we believe it as well. The big advantage that we have is that now all those things that are out there, what if something happens to this guy and does something bad? What if someone, to your point, it's actually not running Windows, it's running Linux, but so what yeah. if somebody breaks into the Linux box here and it starts doing things that shouldn't be done? Yeah. What do we do with the traffic then? Kokobo is getting breached. Kokobo, <laughs> I, I don't think so, but it's a possibility. Hey, yes. it's a computer, right? So, yeah. And it's connected. So if you're using Zscale Cellular, it can't be breached because yeah. we're, brought, we're protecting it with our zero trust policies. Yeah. So it's not just the connectivity and protection, it's that visibility that plays into the AI direction, which is amazing, which is where we fully agree. Well, and I wanted to ask you about that. The, the, this is where the platform advantage really comes into play, right? Correct. Because the same co you know, management console and policies that I'm applying to my users in the office on those Windows PCs, and perhaps all my users out there on my uh, Apple iPhones, right can be applied to these type of devices, Correct. right? So one set of policies to manage. And then if it is breached, like the talk about just the platform advantage on how I can use that to troubleshoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Troubleshooting is one thing because obviously you now yeah. see every packet from this guy is going through your policy. So you have full visibility to know, is it right, is it wrong? And then if it's doing something wrong, you can get into the whole Zscaler world of like, well, I can troubleshoot it. Is there a problem? Yeah. But it could also be, well, maybe I want to block it because it's bad, or I could maybe send it to a honeypot and use it to go and collect high fidelity information about yeah. an attack vector. So there's visibility comes off this and everything it does, mm -hmm. and it's fully secure, then you have that path of security protection visibility and allows us to then give that to every device that exists in any 
location around the world. It's a real interesting opportunity to redefine sock operations too. Absolutely. Right. So that's another video though. So, Happy yeah. to do it, but you know, this is yeah. your video. I don't yeah. want to keep yeah. talking yeah. for hours. So. Yeah. And so uh, what's next for you guys? Well, this is the biggest part right now is yeah. how we deliver more to, and spread across the ecosystem. We're working a lot with big industrials like energy companies, um, more manufacturers. In fact, for those of you who may see this a bit later, we're doing another session in Singapore in a few in a few days' time. We'll be having additional robots, the like dogs that are running around, running sims. So working with more manufacturers around those use, use cases, um, working with vehicle manufacturers, delivering on this, maybe not as just a customer consumption, but maybe as an OEM into your air conditioner or other things like that. So we ensure that every communication coming out as a Zscaler enabled device is protected. And from there, we roll into, uh, we've got, you mentioned AI. We've yes. got, I was going to ask you about the intersection of AI and Zscaler your cellular. Well, you, you see already, we've got a huge amount of AI because in our cloud because we have that entity A to entity B going through our policy, we know what that is. We can start being informed. We can start doing a lot of very interesting things. And you mentioned SecOps, and again, it could be a longer video. Yeah. But now we have intelligent information about different devices that can be pumped directly into SecOps and automate actions, could automate responses, could automate. If we see something from a sensor on a camera, in this case, we can send the Sentry robot out automatically because it's seen it, it's connected into the zero fifth exchange. It's one place. Hmm. SecOps doesn't have to be just SecOps for IT sake. It can be SecOps for the physical sake. Well, it's going to have to be. It has to be. Right. I mean, that's coming. It's coming pretty and that's fast. That's what Jensen so. said. Like, we're yeah. going in a physical world. So right now, we see it as AI for us is just another communication flow through our zero trust ecosystem where we are able to provide context, insights, and then give the customers the ability to act on that. And now we can act in a much larger ecosystem rather than just the good old IT space. All right. So uh, good to wrap this up, I guess, is uh, physical AI coming soon to a business or neighborhood or school near you. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, make sure it's connected securely. And frankly, I think in this world where we have everything connected and a lot of them will be using the AI to communicate, uh, I'm not sure you can get away from zero trust everywhere. I think it's the only way to secure this kind of increasingly connected world we live on. Is that, is that accurate? I have nothing more to say. So All right. Really, really All right. Well. So, well, on that note, we'll wrap up. So I'm Alf and Nathan Howe from Zscaler and Kokobo. All right. Uh, I'm ZS Caravalo from ZK Regions, and thanks for watching. Uh, uh, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and give Kokobo a like too. So, Absolutely. and I'll see you next time in the next episode of Zcast. Thanks, Nathan.